This is a podcast for learners of English. And in this episode, I'm going to talk about a British comedian called Paul Chowdhury. I'm going to break down one of his comedy routines bit by bit. I'll help you understand each line and you can learn some English in the process. This episode is sponsored by italki, which is a language learning platform used by more than 5 million people around the world. Italki helps you find a one-to-one teacher to get personal attention and customized lessons in order to get you speaking from day one. It's very convenient. You can learn English with your teacher from the comfort of your home. There are hundreds of teachers to choose from, so you can find someone who fits your budget and your learning style, and it's professional. Each teacher has a star rating. You can see reviews from other learners. Uh, you can also see their qualifications and specializations like exams or business English or grammar or pronunciation work. And because you're a listener to this podcast, when you buy some talking time, iTalkie will send you a voucher for a free lesson. To qualify for that offer, you need to use my link, which is teacherluke.co.uk slash talk, or click an iTalkie logo on my website. You're listening to Luke's English Podcast. For more information, visit teacherluke.co.uk. Hello, 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 hello. Uh, and hello as well. I nearly forgot you then. Hello. All right. Welcome to the podcast. How are you? Yeah. I don't know why I started like that. Oh, how are you? It's almost like... Um, <laughs> Is that how you would say how are you if you'd been like stuck on a desert island for years and you finally saw your long lost brother or ah, how are you? Are you okay? I've been on a desert island for 12 years. I've forgotten how to socialize. Oh, God. Strange beginning to an episode, but there you go. I'm going to roll with it because I've pressed record and I have to keep going now. Anyway, how are you? Are you okay? You're, you're fine? Good. Is it raining where you are? It's raining here. Uh, we don't care about the weather, Luke. We're not British. Okay, then. Fine, fine, fine. Well, I'm just trying to be nice. Anyway, I hope you're well. Uh, here's a new episode, obviously. And this one is... I think the title of this one's going to be something like this, like British comedy Paul Chowdhury. Um, and I think you know what to expect from these British comedy episodes. We're going to listen to some British comedy and I'm going to help you try and understand it. In a recent episode of this podcast, you heard me talking to Amber and Paul about experiences doing comedy, uh, doing comedy, doing stand up comedy, right? You heard us. Did you hear that episode? Uh, it's the one where we talked about some like bad uh, gig experiences. Uh, doing stand-up comedy. And in that episode, both Paul and I uh, mentioned a British comedian called Paul Chowdhury. So this is another Paul. Uh, so we both, Paul Taylor and I both mentioned Paul Chowdhury, this British comedian. Now, I've mentioned him on the podcast several times before. You may have, rem you may remember, you may have noticed. And I've been meaning to do a whole episode about him for a while now. So here we are. And in this one, we're going to listen to the audio of some of Paul Chowdhury's stand-up. Let's see if you can understand it and if we can learn English from it. I say we can learn English. I mean, by we, I mean you, because I already know the English. Not all of the English. I think there's probably some English out there that I don't know. But you know what I mean. Anyway, let's see if you can understand the stuff we're going to hear. And let's see if you can learn some English from it. And also... Some things about English life and culture too, okay? So we'll be listening to the audio of a video of Paul Chowdhury doing stand-up, which is on YouTube. So who is Paul Chowdhury? That's probably a good way to start, isn't it? Well, Paul Chowdhury is a British comedian from London. He was born in the UK and he is of Indian origin, okay? I suppose that means his parents were Indian. I don't know if his parents were the ones who came to England first, if they were like the first generation, or if it's his grandparents. Probably his parents were born in India and either came to the UK um, on their own or they came with their parents. I don't know. But anyway, Paul was born in the UK and is of Indian origin. In terms of ethnic groups in England... Um, 
White people of English origin are by far the majority ethnic group, but the next largest group is Indian. All right. But I've chosen to talk about Paul Chowdhury in this episode because he's a really funny comedian. And I talked about him with, with Amber and Paul on the podcast recently. I mean, I met Paul Chowdhury when I was first doing stand up, as you heard in the recent episode. And Paul Taylor saw Paul Chowdhury doing comedy uh, at his university. And for both of us, it was kind of like quite a quite a significant moment when we for Paul it was like when he decided he thought he could do it and for me it was just a, a, a an interesting formative experience of meeting this professional comedian and watching how he was able to turn a really bad gig into an extremely funny and good gig he's one of my favorite comedians and so because Paul Chowdhury is of Indian origin ethnicity identity and accents are often topics in his comedy he does like Indian accents and sort of certain British accents and other accents as well. So these like ethnicity, identity, accents, these are all sort of themes in his comedy. I think really this is just because he's always playing with social conventions about what we find acceptable or not acceptable, about the subtle tensions that exist between ethnic groups in England, especially in London where I think he's from, where it's where he certainly lives. And without getting too serious, he makes fun of everyone, including white English guys that might be called Dave. All right, Dave, you know, he makes fun of those sorts of people. He makes fun of his Indian parents or Indians who are fresh off the boat from India and living in England. Uh, he makes fun of Chinese waiters. He makes fun of African taxi drivers and all sorts of people. I like his comedy because of the accents and the impressions he does mainly and because of how quick and brief in his delivery he is. He's not one of these comedians who talks and talks and talks. Instead, it's like very brief setups and it's kind of quite simple, short and sweet, really. He's just funny and that's it, really. I mean, as you'll hear, certainly England's ethnic diversity is a theme that always comes up in his comedy, and that perhaps informs the audience's reactions to him as well. So not only is this all about the comedy, I mean, it's not just about the jokes. Obviously, I think Paul Chowdhury is a, is a comedian and a successful comedian in a certain context, and that context is sort of multiracial England or multi, multiracial London or multiracial racial Britain. This is kind of the world in which Paul Chowdhury's comedy makes sense okay so this is an exploration into a comedy routine but also hopefully you might you may just sort of learn a thing or two about the ethnic diversity that we have in the UK so it might be necessary to give you some information regarding ethnic groups in England I'm saying England actually it's it's Britain I mean the UK not just England I mean like England Scotland Northern Ireland and Wales ethnic diversity in the UK. And, it, and so here are some statistics. And this is from the UK's most recent census, the 2011 census. The census is the country's largest national survey. It's basically where every household in the country uh, is given this survey. And, it, and as, as many people as possible complete the survey with information about themselves. And it it includes information about ethnicity, religious beliefs, and all kinds of other things. And that then is recorded and the information is made publicly available to everyone. So it's a kind of very broad national survey. Um, it's, the, it's the country's largest national survey and it's very reliable and it's... Um, very impartial as a source of information. So the figures that you get from the census are generally accurate. So what do you think? I mean, I've already mentioned something about England's ethnic makeup. But what do you think? If you can imagine a pie chart with different segments for the different ethnicities in the UK, um, what would it look like? What do you think are the ethnic groups and their percentages? What do you think that pie chart looks like? I said that the majority group is sort of white, uh, white British, which actually includes Irish as well in this data. 
So white British, including Irish. How big do you think that part of the pie chart will be? And what about the other ethnicities? Can can you imagine what other ethnic groups would appear in the pie chart? And how big would their pieces of the pie chart be? Well, here are the figures. Actually, you'll see if you look at the page for this episode, I, I've, I don't have these figures as a pie chart. I've actually got them here as a table. Um, but anyway, here are the figures, which, by the way, are controversial. These figures are a little bit controversial, not because of the numbers and not because of like how many different ethnic groups there are. That's not the controversial point. But they're controversial because of the way that the different groups are classified. For example, how different uh, groups of people are defined. For example, the categories white and black. They're not really ethnicities, are they? I mean, is white an ethnicity? Anyway, here is some information from the 2011 census. And I, I think this... I think this data, all the people in this data, means people registered as British citizens, which could include people born in the country or people who have moved to the country and then become citizens. But anyway, here we go. Here's the data. So starting with the largest uh, group, that is white or white British, which includes white Irish, and um, that's 87.1%. 87.1% of the country uh, the people in the country are white or white British or including white Irish. Okay, 87.1. So, you know, the vast majority of people, I would say. Then the next largest group, and this is 6.9% of the population, is defined as Asian or Asian British. And by the way, when they add British on the end, that probably means that we're referring to people who were born in the country, but who have sort of uh, a background, like maybe origins... Um, from another place. So if you say Asian British, it means probably British people were born in the UK, but maybe their parents or their parents' parents were were from another place, or Asia in this case. So Asian British is the largest group, and that accounts for 6.9%. That breaks down into different uh, categories. The largest category within the the, the category of Asian is um, is Indian, and that that is actually 2.3% of the whole population. 2.3% of the people in the UK are of Indian origin. 1.9% uh, Pakistani, from Pakistan. 0.7% uh, Bangladeshi, or from Bangladesh. 0.7% Chinese. And then other Asian. I'm not sure how that breaks down, but other Asian is 1.4%. Okay? So there you go. You can see that the largest ethnic group, uh, meaning non-white ethnic group, is Indian uh, with 2.3% of the population. Uh, after um, Asian or Asian British, we have black or black British. And that does break down into different categories as well. You've got like uh, Caribbean and we have like communities, particularly in London, of uh, people whose parents or their grandparents originally came from probably Jamaica and moved to the UK in the 1950s. Um, lots of people in London have sort of Caribbean origins. And it also would include uh, people coming from different uh, countries within the continent of Africa. So anyway, that's black or black British, and that's 3% of the population. And you can see it's a little controversial to say black. I mean, because, you know, is that an ethnicity? I don't know. I'm not here to try and you know, debate the definitions and stuff, but I'm just trying to give you an idea of the ethnic makeup of the country. So that's 3% black or black British. And then um, mixed or multiple race or mixed ethnicity, which is again, even more complicated and hard to define, but basically mixed as a category is 2% of the country. And then we've got other ethnic groups. The total there is 0.9%. Uh, and then we have also gypsy or traveller or Irish traveller um, is 0.1%. Um, okay. Um, now, I know that there are other ethnic groups. For example, we know that in uh, in England, uh, well, in, probably across the whole of the UK, there are quite a lot of Polish people who've moved 
uh, to the country and settled there over the you know over the last few decades and things. I don't see Polish here. Do you think that's included in the other ethnic group category, or maybe that's included in white? I don't know. You see, it's when you start to examine it, it starts to get a bit complicated. But anyway, the main thing here is that eighty-seven point one percent white or white British, and then six point nine percent Asian, and two point three percent of the total uh, are of Indian origin. Okay, so that just gives you an idea. Now, by the way, most of the non-white ethnic groups. Most of those people in those categories are concentrated in the cities, particularly in London. So there are, for example, more Indian, Pakistani or generally Asian communities in London than there are in most other parts of the country. Although also you find similar communities in other cities like Birmingham, Manchester, Leicester and various other places too. Uh, and that's true for other ethnic groups. You tend to find that the the, the smaller ethnic groups from Asia, you know, or from African or Caribbean origins, probably live in the cities. So that just gives you an idea. Certainly, if you go to London, you'll notice it's a, it's a lot more ethnically diverse than uh, other parts of the country. So London has a diverse population. In fact, London has had a diverse population for centuries, because, you know, London being the capital city of the country, um, back in, you know, cent- over 100 years ago or more, Britain was a trading nation that um, had colonies all around the world and was trading with different places all around the world. And of course, that meant that people came to Britain and they came to places like uh, Southampton or Bristol or Liverpool or London and from all over the world. And so parts of London, let's say in the Victorian times, would have been extremely diverse in terms of their ethnicity too like much more diverse than many other cities would have been because of the international nature of britain and its colonial involvement in other other countries and stuff so london's all i mean not always been a diverse place but it's it's been a diverse place for for you know centuries really and that's certainly true today in the kind of post-colonial uh, era so um most of the Indian and Caribbean families moved to London in the immediate post-war period, though. And people like Paul Chowdhury, who are basically around my age, maybe a little older or maybe younger or whatever, but of my generation. Most most people like Paul would have grown up in the UK, probably watching this, you know, watching the same TV as me, just being exposed to the same kind of thing as me, uh, but having Indian parents at home. And so coming you know living in a sort of indian culture but also in an english culture just like just like me i'm just trying to give you a picture of what um what the ethnic makeup of um the country is anyway back to paul chowdhury i don't want to just go on about ethnicity as i said before I'm, i've got i'm doing this episode because paul chowdhury is is a very funny person i want to share his comedy with you but i think it does help to give you a bit of context like I said earlier. So it's quite interesting that Paul Chowdhury's audiences that you see in his shows, his audiences are often quite diverse. He appeals to everyone, uh, white people, Asians, Afro-Caribbeans and so on, uh, English people in general. In his audience, he often picks out the groups, the different groups that he will notice in the audience. He'll he'll uh, pick out pick those groups out and he'll do crowd work he'll talk to people in the in the audience and stuff like that and he he sort of notices people of different origins and it's funny the way he makes fun of them one after the other he kind of he uses i guess the sort of some to some extent the uh on one hand the tension that there might be there's slight tension and he uses that uh, to his advantage for his comedy and also just uses the fact that we like to we're happy to laugh and celebrate our differences and come together in a comedy show and all laugh and have fun about these things. There's not really any need to go further into all of that stuff. It's just a bit of context. It doesn't have to be all about ethnicity. Like I said, I mainly wanted to do this episode because I find him funny. So let's listen to some of Paul Chowdhury's material and see if you can understand it and if we can learn some English from it. So this is the audio from a YouTube video of Paul Chowdhury's uh, appearance on a show, a TV show called Live at the Apollo. So Live at the Apollo is the BBC's big stand-up comedy show, uh, which is filmed at the Hammersmith Apollo, 
which is just 10 minutes down the road from where I used to live in London. The Hammersmith Apollo is a huge venue and they have big comedy shows there and they also do music concerts. And all of the great bands that you love, all the great British rock bands from the from uh, the last few decades, they've all done shows at the Hammersmith Apollo. It's a very famous venue. The Who, uh, Elton John, Queen, Black Sabbath, um, David Bowie's last concert as Ziggy Stardust was there at the ha- Hammersmith Apollo. Just all of the great bands. And also all the big comedians who uh, we have in England. They do often their biggest shows at Hammersmith Apollo. So Live at the Apollo is this very big comedy show which is filmed uh, filmed and uh, shown on on primetime television on, on the BBC. And so this is Paul Chowdhury's appearance on Live at the uh, Apollo, just the audio from it. Um, you should know... Uh, this this routine is full of slang, uh, rude language, so you'll hear some swearing and stuff. Also accents, plenty of different accents, and also jokes about ethnic identity. That's what you can expect. I'm not sure what you're going to think of this as ever. Whenever I play you comedy, I'm, I kind of think, oh my God, what will people in different corners of the world think of this? I wonder what you could think, because this could easily be considered offensive because he's kind of making fun of different ethnic groups to an extent. But my instinct tells me that this is just funny. And so I'm going to go with it. Um, But certainly a lot of the laughs come from the fact that this is the kind of this kind of thing, the sorts of things he's saying are borderline unacceptable. Like in some way. uh, He gets away with it. Right, because. It's coming from an Indian guy. Although the things he's saying might be considered unacceptable uh, or sort of politically incorrect if they came out of the mouth of just a, a, a white guy, for some reason, because it's coming from an Indian guy, that kind of makes it okay. If it was a white guy up there making fun of ethnic minorities, that would be considered extremely old fashioned and in very bad taste. And it, you know, people wouldn't really accept it. But Paul Chowdhury has got the pass. He's got the card because he's Indian, so he can do it. He can even get away with doing impressions of Africans and Chinese people, which, for example, I would definitely not get away with in front of an English audience. Anyway, enough from me. Let's now get into it, okay? Let's go. We're going to start listening to the routine. You can imagine a very big uh, venue in West London, lights, like smoke on the stage, music, and Paul Chowdhury comes out. So I'm going to break it up into parts. The video is about 10 minutes long. Is it 10? Yeah, it's about 10 minutes long. I'm going to break it up into bits. The first thing you're going to hear is the first three minutes of his routine. Let's just see if you can understand what he's saying. That's the, that's your task. Can you follow the routine? Can you understand what he's saying? Uh, it might be a little bit difficult because of the the sound quality. You'll hear that the the... the the sound is a bit echoey. His voice echoes a little bit because it's such a big room. That might make it a little difficult for you to catch everything. But generally, let's just listen, see how much you can understand. And after about three minutes, I'll stop and I'll go through it again and and kind of explain it bit by bit. Okay, right then. So here we go. What's happening, white people? I can do some stuff each night. None of the old stuff I used to do, like Purple Rain. So what I like about London, so the weather's changing. You see people walking about, especially when the weather gets good, hot or too cold, Cockneys, it is biking, Dave. I am absolutely sweltering, mate. I'm sweating like a right slag. It's 12 degrees, Dave going to rain in a minute. <laughs> and then you see Indians walking about with their coats and jackets on. It's too cold to get the coat and the jacket. <laughs> the sweater. <laughs> it's too cold, bastard. <laughs> it is biking, Dave. <laughs> Same weather, different clothes. <laughs> How many people that keep this country going are the illegal minicab drivers? I got this cab the other day, right? Starts telling me his life story. I'm in the back. In my country, I was a doctor. What? I was a doctor in my country. 
I was like, keep your eyes on the road, mate. <laughs> oh, we need a doctor after this ride. I was a doctor. What do you need to become a doctor in your country? A driving license. <laughs> it's good to see a lot of Indian people have come out tonight. <laughs> One guy over there, where are you from, gangster? Milton Keynes. Milton Keynes. <laughs> Still with your parents? No. Just think about that. English people get a lot more independence. Indian people don't get the independence. English, like, when you want to move out, you're never allowed to move out of your family home. Dad, I, I want to move out. I want to get my own. You want to do what, bastard? <laughs> I want to get out and get... You never leave this house, bastard! <laughs> you don't leave... I'm dead, you're dead, everybody's dead! <laughs> and you still don't leave, bastard! <laughs> English people want more independence. When are you going to move out, son? You're five now. <laughs> when are you going to get and go to a job, you scrounge little slag? <laughs> get out and take your kids with you. <laughs> yeah. More independence. Get a lot of racism. Like, loads of my mates. I've got a lot of English mates. They always want to get out for a curry with me. <laughs> Paul, let's get out for a curry, mate. Why would I want to go out for a curry? <laughs> you racist <laughs> bastard. I don't say, Dave, let's go out for a Cornish pasty, mate. <laughs> but I'm not Cornish. I'm not fresh off the banana boat, Dave. <laughs> Indian food's the only food that's referred to as a laxative. <laughs> I've got to be on the shit while I'm eating this. <laughs> it's going right through me, son. What is it, Paul? It's a banana, Dave. All right, so that was the first three minutes and ten seconds or so. All right, how's it going for you? you I know what you're thinking. You go, Luke, I cannot understand. I know you're probably thinking you don't understand. It's all happening too fast. He swallows his words. Uh, that may be what you're thinking. All right, let's go back. Did you notice any of the accents he did? So he, he kind of fired out some sort of English accents, like English sort of football fan type accent. Like, all right, Dave. There's that one. Then there's an Indian accent, a kind of a strong Indian accent, and also, a, I guess, an African accent in there too. Let's go back to the beginning. I'm going to break it down completely. Now, to be fair, the first joke, maybe the second joke, is a joke about his appearance. Um, to describe Paul, he's kind of, I guess, a little bit short. He's slim. Uh, he he he's quite sharply dressed in a in a like a an, a good suit. He's got like uh, dark hair in a sort of maybe almost like a beetle haircut in this video, but he's got like a little bit of a beard as well. He's got like he's he's groomed his facial hair. He's obviously taking care over his appearance. He's wearing a sort of a waistcoat under his suit. He's sharply dressed. He looks pretty cool. He, in fact, he looks a bit like Prince. You know the musician Prince. He kind of looks a little bit like Prince from a distance. Um. And that's, I think, the first joke he makes is about his appearance. He says, uh, well, let's hear what he says. The first thing, actually, is like, what's happening, white people? Meaning, what's happening? Meaning, like, what's up? Or, you know, hello. Uh, what's happening, white people? Because, let's say, let's, let's be honest, the audience is mostly white people. So, you know, I don't know why that's funny but it does get a reaction. What's happening, white people? It's immediately, I guess it immediately contextualizes the fact that we know, everyone knows, but maybe they're not saying it, that this is a huge audience, mostly white people. And here he is, um, uh, a member of the Indian community on stage. And there's, you know, again, it's like what I was saying to Paul, what Paul Chowdhury did when I saw him, which was really impressive and worked, he pointed things out everyone knew maybe things that people were feeling a bit awkward about um he pointed them out and put them into words and somehow that was very liberating for everyone in the room it's hard to explain it really but that's kind of what's going on and maybe when he says what's happening white people he's immediately uh acknowledging something about that yeah what's happening white people and do some stuff each night. None of the old stuff I used to do, like Purple Rain. He said, I'm going to do some stuff for you tonight. None of the, none of the old stuff I used to do, like Purple Rain. And that's funny because he does look a bit like Prince. And that's very normal. Like, it's very common for comedians to come up 
and make a joke about their appearance. And it's usually things like, I know what you're thinking. When did blah, 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 blah start doing stand-up comedy? I think even Paul Taylor used to do that because Paul looks a bit like Harry Potter. And so he used to say, I know what you're thinking. When did Harry Potter start doing stand-up comedy? And it you know, often works because the fact is that when, as a comedian, when you go up on stage, the audience are immediately judging you by your appearance. They, you know, the audience, they look at the comedian and they immediately make a, a judgment about the way the person looks. And making a joke about your appearance can be a good way of kind of, I guess, you know, again, making uh, acknowledging something or at least um, gaining some control again. Yeah, so anyway, I'm, um, what is it? I'm going to do some stuff for you. None of the old stuff I used to do, like Purple Rain. What's happening, white people? <laughs> I can do some stuff each night. None of the old stuff I used to do, like Purple Rain. So what I like about London. So the weather's changing. You see people walking about, especially when the weather gets good, hot or too cold, Cockneys, it is biking dive. <laughs> I am absolutely sweltering, mate. I'm sweating like a right slag. <laughs> it's 12 degrees, Dave. It's 12 degrees, Dave. Right, so, uh, okay, let me go back. So what I like about London. So- this is what I like about London. The thing is about Paul's stand-up is that you know, I've said this to you before that in jokes there is there's a setup and then there's a punchline. The setup is just the information that you need to give the audience to to then uh you know, to set up the joke and then the punchline is the bit that kind of makes everyone laugh, right? So you need to somehow you need to say certain things in order to set up the audience's expectations which are then uh, I don't know, con- surprised or confirmed or something with with a punchline. So, what I'm saying is that Paul Chowdhury's setups are often very quick, very brief. In fact, often he kind of flies through his setups so quickly he doesn't really finish his sentence. He just kind of says certain half finished sentences. But the audience are with him. We know exactly what he's referring to. He kind of he will do half a sentence and he leaves certain things unsaid. I think a lot of the time the things he's leaving unsaid are, you know, the the things about uh, the topic that he's talking about, like the fact that basically it's like, you know, we live in a multicultural place and that can, you know, cause problems and it can be confusing and, and things like that. These are the sorts of things he's referring to. But his setups are often half finished sentences and ideas kind of get jammed in together and really i think that's probably because he is uh, uh, because he's a professional comedian he's learned from doing lots and lots and lots of shows in the clubs and the comedy clubs he's learned that you've got to get to the funny bits quickly so if you're listening to this and you're thinking i didn't catch that it's because the 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 setups are partially finished sentences but for me and for the audience we know exactly where he's going we know exactly what he's referring to and because of that he can then jump straight to the to the funny bits so he's he's going to say that's what i like about london it's like uh the you know we get uh, something about the weather here we go <laughs> So what I like about London, so the weather's changing. You see people walking about, especially when the weather gets good, hot or too cold. So he's saying uh, the weather's changing. You see people walking around, especially when the weather's too hot or too cold. You see cockneys. So he's now going to talk about how cockneys react to changes in the weather, basically. So uh, um, the weather's changing and you see people walking around especially when it's either too hot or too cold. And London, so the weather's changing. You see people walking about, especially when the weather gets good, hot or too cold. Cockneys, it is biking dive. So he's, he jumps straight into, it is biking dive, which is the joke because he's doing the voice of a typical sort of London bloke. It is biking dive because all these blokes are all called Dave. You know what I mean? It is biking dive. It is absolutely biking. I am sweltering Dave. It's it's just funny to see Paul Chowdhury doing this absolutely perfect accent. He's got it really perfect. About, especially when the weather gets good, hot or too cold, Cockneys, it is baking, Dave. <laughs> baking, right? It's baking. Nice bit of language. It's baking, meaning it's really hot. I would use that. I would say that. I'm not like Dave. I'm not like, it is, it is baking, Dave. I'm not one of those sorts of people, but I would use the expression baking. I'd say it's baking today. It's sweltering. I am absolutely sweltering, mate. I'm sweating like a right slag. 
<laughs> so slag is the sort of thing that you would expect a cockney to say. I'm sweating like a right slag. Now, okay, this is a bit of a tricky, slightly offensive word. Um, a, a slag is is uh, a, a a woman who is easy, right? A woman who sleeps with a lot of people. That's a slag, okay? It's a very offensive thing to say to someone. If you call a woman a slag, it's like extremely offensive and provocative thing to say. So it's a very rude word. But um, he's in this situation, Paul Chowdhury's not using the word as a term of abuse because cockneys will use the word slag for anyone. They'll call anyone a slag, right? So they call their mate Dave a slag. You, you know, Dave, you slag. So they'll they'll use the word for anyone. So it's kind of, in a sense, in that way, it's become removed from its actual meaning and it's just a generic sort of word, abusive word or a, an abusive nickname. Dave, you slag. Right, I feel like a... What is it? I'm sweltering. I'm f- sweltering, mate. I'm sweating like a right slag. Um, it's just... Um, it's the the joke really is in the fact that he is he's doing a really good impression of a certain type of person, and that's just funny. It's funny when someone copies another person so closely like that. I'm sweating like a right slag. <laughs> it's twelve degrees, Dave. <laughs> I'm sweating like a right slag. It's twelve degrees, Dave. So this is Paul Chowdhury's thing: is that he does these big accents, and then his voice. It's very straight and very serious. It's 12 degrees, Dave. 12 degrees is uh, it's not very hot. But for an English bloke like Dave, it's, it is baking. It's 12 degrees. I'm absolutely sweltering, mate. I'm sweating like a right slag. <laughs> it's 12 degrees, Dave. <laughs> it's going to rain in a minute. <laughs> and then the Indians walking about with their coats and jackets on. It's too cold to get the cord of the jacket. <laughs> This is, it's too cold, bastard. this is this is uh, you see indian people walking around with their coats and jackets on so you know where dave is like it is sweltering the indians are like it's too cold i can't do the accent very well and if i and it's not really it's not really okay for me to do the accent but i know some of you are going yes it's fine it's like well in my country it is unacceptable to do the accent I don't know what, I don't know what accent that is. That's such a generic, sort of foreign person in my country. My people find it very rude. Anyway, it's going to rain in a minute. <laughs> and then the Indians walking about with their coats and jackets on. It's too cold to get the cord of the jacket. <laughs> this sweater. <laughs> <laughs> this sweater. I can't do it. I can't roll my tongue like that. This sweater. That's a sweater. But uh, if, if with an Indian accent, w sounds like W sounds become like v sounds. So sweater is like svet, sweater. I, I can't do it. If I do it, it's going to sound like totally wrong. And not just in terms of it being offensive, but just being inaccurate. So anyway, uh, that's him saying it's too cold. Got the coat, the jacket, the sweater. It's too cold, bastard. Bastard is a word for some reason that like Indian people will use. Because I think it's a translation from a a, 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 a a word in which version of the language? Punjabi? Oh dear, I'm not sure. Indian people, you can confirm. Punjabi, all right. I think it's Punjabi. that uh, They use words like uh, certain words that basically mean bastard. And so Indian people apparently say the word bastard a bit too much. All right. Like, it's too cold, bastard. Yeah, with their coats and jackets on. It's too cold to get the cord of the jacket. <laughs> <laughs> it's too cold, bastard. It is biking, Dave. <laughs> Same way, the different clothes. <laughs> the only people that keep this country going are the illegal minicab drivers. The only people who keep this country going are the illegal minicab drivers. Uh, <laughs> uh, certainly in London, there are quite a lot of illegal minicab drivers. These, you shouldn't really take illegal minicabs, you know, because it's potentially not very safe. But illegal minicab drivers, drivers, these are guys who basically drive their cars and they're not registered as taxi drivers, but they do hang around outside nightclubs or hang around outside bars 
and they're like they they hang around minicab it's it's very common if you come out of a bar or a, or a club or something in london there's these guys hanging around uh it's not sure i'm not sure where they all come from but they will be offering their services as minicab drivers and you'll hear minicab minicab like that and they could be from anywhere really but he's saying that, that the only people who keep this country going are the illegal minicab drivers and then he starts talking about an encounter he had with a, a minicab driver dive <laughs> same way the different clothes <laughs> only people that keep this country going are the illegal minicab drivers i get this cab the other day right starts telling me his life story i'm in the back in my country i was a doctor <laughs> what I was a doctor in my country. I suppose this is like someone from some African country, like what, Nigeria or something like that? I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> but again, it is, it's a pretty good accent. It's a pretty good accent, but I, I couldn't go up in, at the Hammersmith Apollo and do that joke. But anyway, regardless of that, Paul is just very good at doing the accent which I think is another reason why he gets away with it. If he was shit at doing the accent, if they were really badly done accents, then it would definitely, it would, it would be not funny and also it would be unacceptable. But because the accent's so accurate, it kind of makes it okay. I was like, keep your eyes on the road, mate. <laughs> well, we need a doctor after this ride. <laughs> keep your eyes on the road, mate, or we'll need a doctor after this ride. Because the guy's like turning round. In my country, I was a doctor. And he keeps looking at him, I guess, to talk to him. So basically, like, keep your eyes on the road, mate. Or we'll actually need a doctor after this ride. The road, mate. <laughs> well, we need a doctor after this ride. I was a doctor. What do you need to become a doctor in your country? A driving license. <laughs> <laughs> what do you need to become a doctor in your country? A driving license. Okay, right, you know. I mean, that is kind of borderline racist, isn't it? But he's not being serious, suggesting that in some countries, it, perhaps the, 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 the process of becoming a doctor might be a little easier or a little bit less stringent than it is in the UK. Uh, I don't know. Uh, what, does it, what do you need to become a doctor in your country? Driver's license. In your country, a driving license. <laughs> it's good to see a lot of Indian people have come out tonight. It's good to see a lot of Indian people have come out tonight. Okay. One guy over there, where are you from, gangster? Milton Keynes. Milton Keynes. <laughs> where are you from, gangster? I love the way he calls him gangster. Or the way Paul uses this kind of hip hop slang. Where are you from, gangster? Which is pretty funny because, like, some of the Indian guys that you see in, in London, depending on like, which part of London they're from or something, they will, in a, a bit like Ali G they'll kind of act like they are like hip hop gangsters from like the East coast or West coast of America or something, but they're living in, in, in like Ealing, you know, in West London or something. So they kind of have this gangster vibe to them, even though they're just sort of like average Indian guys from West London. So anyway, where you where you from gangster and the guys from Milton Keynes, Milton Keynes is like the most, generic average and sort of boring english town that you can imagine i mean if you say milton Keynes in a comedy show it usually will get a laugh from an english audience because it's such a kind of unremarkable and middle england kind of place where you're from gangster milton Keynes. i love it it's good to see a lot of indian people have come out tonight <laughs> one guy over there where you from gangster Milton Keynes. <laughs> Still live with your parents? No. Still live with your parents? And the guy says no. Uh, it would have been funnier if he'd said yes, but apparently this guy doesn't. But then Paul Chowdhury talks about how um, uh, if you are Indian, it's, it's really hard to leave home. It's hard to leave the family home. Uh, white people in England get a lot more freedom and independence. In fact, to an extent, we are expected to leave home earlier so typically for a white person if you are still living at home after the age of 20 or something 
your parents are like, when are you going to move out? Like, come on, get, move out, get yourself a job and, you know, get your independence. Like your parents kind of want you to move out when you hit about 18 years old often. Um, so like, when are you going to move out, Dave? When are you going to move out? But Indian, uh, Indian young people, their parents are far less willing to give them their independence. They're expected to just stay in the family home forever, basically. So do you still live with your parents? Still live with your parents. Just think about it. Like, English people get a lot more independence. Indian people don't get the independence. English, like, when you want to move out, you're never allowed to move out of a family home. Dad, I, I want to move out. I want to get my own. You want to do what, bastard? <laughs> I want to get out and get... You never leave this house, bastard! <laughs> you don't leave... Real- I'm dead, you're dead, everybody's dead! <laughs> you never leave this house. You, you, you don't leave until I'm dead, you're dead, everybody's dead! You'll never leave this house, bastard! I can't do the accent. <laughs> I want to get out and get... You never leave this house, bastard! <laughs> you don't leave... Real- I'm dead, you're dead, everybody's dead! <laughs> And you still don't leave, bastard. <laughs> English people got more independence. When are you going to move out, son? <laughs> You're five now. <laughs> when are you going to move out? You're five now. All right. <laughs> Basic joke, but it works, doesn't it? <laughs> when are you going to get a guy a job, you scroungy little slag? <laughs> when are you going to go out and get a job, you scroungy little slag? So there's that word slag again, because uh, he's doing the voice of this Cockney guy. When are you going to go out and get get yourself a job, you scrounge, you little slag? Scrounge. To scrounge means to, like, uh, beg and take money from other people, right? A scrounger is someone who's always expecting other people to give them things, to give them money. And they're always like, oh, can you give me, can you give me this? Can you give me that? Can you give me some money? Can you give me a, a ride to the station? Can you give me this? Can you give me that? That's called scrounging. And, um... Uh, he uses the word scroungy as an adjective. You scroungy little slag. It's rather a poetic phrase, I think you'll agree. When are you going to move out, you scroungy little slag? <laughs> when are you going to get and go a job, you scroungy little slag? <laughs> get out and take your kids with you. <laughs> get out and take your kids with you. All right. Get out and take your kids with you. Get out. That's, you see, that's the Cockney accent. Get out and take your kids with you. With, v, 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 not with, T-H, but with, like with a V sound. Get out and take your kids with you. So the joke there is about the fact that in some communities, white uh, teenagers are known for having children and getting pregnant, like very young. It's quite shocking, really, that in some probably poor white communities, you find that... Uh, teenagers are getting pregnant but the joke is that in this case when you're going to move out you come on you're five years old get out and you know get out and get a job you scroungy little slag and take your kids with you all right okay (laughs) not more independence get a lot of racism like loads of my mates i've got a lot of english mates they always want to get out for a curry with me (laughs) paul let's get out for a curry mate so he's talking about how he's surprised that his English mates always suggest having a curry with him, which is kind of feels a bit racist. I mean, it's not it's not racist abuse, but it feels a bit strange for Paul because he's kind of thinking, I you know, why would I want to have a curry? Why are you? Why do you assume that I'm going to want to have a curry? So it's a form of sort of prejudice that his white mates and they're his mates. But they, he's, he's frustrated about the fact that they always just assume certain things about him just because he's Indian. Like, they all go, Paul, let's go out and get a curry, um, which he finds sort of mildly irritating. I'm going to get out for a curry with me. <laughs> Paul, let's go out for a curry, mate. Why would I want to go out for a curry? <laughs> you racist <laughs> bastard. I don't say, Dave, let's go out for a Cornish pasty, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, let's go out for a Cornish pasty. A Cornish pasty is like really traditional uh, food that comes from Cornwall, which is in England. It's in the far southwest of England. Cornish pasties are traditional English food that were made in that region for many, many, many years. And you find Cornish pasties in certain shops as well. They're, it's just like generic kind of white English food. You know, you've got Cornish pasty, fish and chips, 
steak and steak and kidney pie uh these sorts of things are like really basic uh Eng- food that's traditionally english and probably working class english as well um and and you find them everywhere <laughs> you wouldn't go out for a cornish pasty anyway but i don't know there's just something funny about ref- referencing a cornish pasty you know dave do you want to go out for a cornish pasty <laughs> I don't say, Dave, let's go out for a Cornish pasty, mate. A Cornish pasty is basically like meat and vegetables, I guess, sort of cooked, stewed or something, and then wrapped in um, uh, wrapped in pastry. And they were used by uh, people working in coal mines. So this is they were used by working class people who were working underground back in the sort of industrial period. A Cornish pasty was a, a practical uh, sort of food that... It's, in a sense, it was like a, a packed lunch in itself because it was like meat, cheap meat and vegetables cooked and then put inside pastry and then cooked. And so it's quite portable. It's sort of like portable food. But I mean, a good Cornish pasty is delicious, but they could also be pretty plain and and grossy. But anyway, let's go out. Do you want to go out for a Cornish pasty? I don't say, Dave, let's go out for a Cornish pasty, mate. <laughs> But I'm not Cornish. I'm not fresh off the banana boat, Dave. And Dave, his mate Dave's like, but I'm not Cornish. And he's like, well, not, and I'm not fresh off the banana boat, Dave. Fresh off the boat, fresh off the banana boat. S- uh, suggesting that, um, uh, like, p- uh, Paul has uh, diverse tastes. He enjoys eating all the other, th- all the foods that everyone else eats. So he's not, he doesn't just eat curry. Indian food is the only food that's referred to as a laxative. <laughs> Indian food is the only food that is referred to as a laxative. A laxative is something that you would take, possibly like something you get from the pharmacy to help you go to the toilet, okay? Right? So if you've got constipation, which is when you can't do a poo, all right, uh, you might take a laxative to help you go to the loo more easily. So he's saying that Indian food is the only food that's referred to as a laxative, which is kind of true in a sense that uh, people, whenever they talk about curry, they always say the same thing. They always say this curry went, it went straight through me. Meaning that whenever they talk about eating curry, they always have to talk about how it made them go to the toilet the next day, which, you know, it must be annoying for Paul Chowdhury to hear just the same thing being said about curry all the time, about how it's, it, it, it made people go to the toilet. <laughs> Indian food is the only food that's referred to as a laxative. I've got to be on the shitter while I'm eating this. It's going right through me, son. I've got to be on the shitter. To be on the shitter, the shitter is the toilet. I've got to be on the shitter while I'm eating this. It's going right through me, Dave. If something goes right through you, I think you can imagine, can't you, what that means? That you eat it and almost immediately comes out again at the other end. Uh, okay, no need to dwell on that idea too much, but it's going right through me. You know, oh god, tell you what, Dave, that curry we had last night went right through me. I've got to be on the shit while I'm eating this. <laughs> it's going right through me, son. What is it, Paul? It's a banana, Dave. <laughs> I don't know what. I don't really understand that joke, but maybe it's suggesting that Dave his uh, food intake uh, is so basic that even a banana would be exotic even a banana would be an exotic thing that dave's stomach couldn't handle you know so this is more about how dave is a small-minded person and has a limited diet yeah all right we can all break down racial barriers in this country if we're all put on the same accent as the person we're speaking to okay we're going to move on to the next bit now and he's saying i think we could all break down racial barriers in this country if we all put on the accent of the people that we're speaking to all right by the way you might be thinking you might be wondering about paul chowdhury's voice like his normal voice that he does in the normal bits of his his routine and you know he speaks just like like anyone else from london really right so he does all these accents but his normal accent is just He's pretty kind of well-spoken, really. He's got maybe a bit of a London accent. He might drop a few of his T's and things like that. But um, he's pretty well-spoken. If you are having trouble understanding the little setups and things he's saying, it's just because he's saying them very quickly. And like I said before, he ten- he skips through those bits quite fast and just gets to the funny bit, the, the, the accent bit. Also, because he's on stage uh, at Live at the Apollo 
I expect he probably was feeling a bit nervous, which probably made him speak a bit more quickly than he normally would. Anyway, I th- he's saying, we could break down racial barriers in this country if we all put on the accent of the people we're talking to. And then he gives an example of going to an Indian restaurant and putting on the accent of an Indian person while ordering the food. I reckon we can all break down racial barriers in this country if we all put on the same accent as the person we're speaking to. I think, you know, Indian restaurant put on a slight Indian accent, like one popper dom. <laughs> one chicken tikka masala. <laughs> one naan bread. <laughs> don't take it too far. Like, bring it to me, bastard. Don't, don't, don't do the head shaking and the hand movement. Because that's racist. If you change your cheeks, you've got to change your face to go with the voice. Vine of buttered chicken. I did that too much in this restaurant the other day. It's like, vine of buttered chicken. The guy goes to me, you want dick sauce with that? Vine of buttered chicken. You want dick sauce or not dick sauce? I just dropped the accent at that point. Listen, man, forget the dick sauce. What kind of restaurant is this? Thick sauce, not dick sauce. That was some pretty thick sauce when it came back. All right, did you get that? Did you get it? Listen, man, forget the dick sauce. Forget the. Di- Do you want dick sauce with that? Okay, <laughs> going back, going back, going back to to the beginning of that little bit. Okay. <laughs> I reckon, he says. I reckon. Uh, have you ever come across that word before? It's like saying, I think. I reckon. So it's like a way of giving an opinion. I reckon that we could all break down barriers, racial barriers in this country, if we all put on the accent of the person we're talking to. All right? Um, which is an interesting idea. But then he demonstrates it with the restaurant. One poppadum, one buttered chicken. And he it's funny because of the way he changes his face. He's saying, to do this properly, you need to change the shape of your face. You need to, like... Uh, you need to see the video, but you like stick your chin out, squeeze your cheeks, one buttered chicken. Um, and <laughs> uh, he's saying, uh, I did this. Uh, he said, don't go, don't go too far. Don't say, bring it to me, bastard. Um, yeah. <laughs> bring it to me, bastard. I reckon we can all break down racial barriers in this country if we all put on the same accent as the person we're speaking to. You know, Indian restaurant put on a slight Indian accent, like put on a slight Indian accent, like one papa dum, right? One papa dum, papa dum. <laughs> one chicken tikka masala, <laughs> one naan bread. <laughs> don't take it too far, like bring it to me, bastard. Don't, don't, don't do the head shaking and the hand movement. Don't do the head shaking and the hand movement. Bring it to me, bastard. Don't do that because that's racist. Because that's racist. <laughs> if you change your cheeks, you've got to change your face to go with the voice. Vine of buttered chicken. <laughs> I did that too much in this restaurant the other day. It's like, vine of buttered chicken. The guy goes to me, you want dick sauce with that? <laughs> <laughs> so that's actually, do you want thick sauce with that? Thick sauce. But because of the guy's accent, it sounds like, do you want dick sauce with that? Uh, I don't know what dick sauce is and I'm not sure I want to have any of that on my buttered chicken thank you very much but do you want dick sauce with that? Buttered chicken the guy goes to me you want dick sauce with that? (laughs) Want a buttered chicken you want dick sauce or not dick sauce? I just dropped the accent at that point listen man forget the dick sauce (laughs) forget the dick sauce and he's and then the guy says uh i meant thick sauce not dick sauce what kind of restaurant is this i said thick sauce not dick sauce that was some pretty thick sauce when it came back (laughs) that was some pretty thick sauce when it came back suggesting that i don't know that the guy maybe did put some actual dick sauce in the sauce in the kitchen because I suppose, I don't know, he's maybe suggesting that he had... I mean, if I explain the joke, it it spoils it, doesn't it, right? But, you know, if you don't get it, that's just my job, isn't it? It's my job to try and help you understand it, right? So if I ruin the joke, it's because we're fucking dissecting a frog here. 
It's like biology class. You want to learn how the frog works or not? Okay, Luke, it's all right. Okay, let's just carry on because this is, there's like five more minutes of this routine left and I've already been going for an hour. What the? All right, let's keep going. You gotta do it everywhere, you know? That's when I want racism. I want it in a restaurant. If I go to a Chinese restaurant, I don't want some guy coming, what can you get you, mate? You can get me a Chinese waiter. <laughs> What's Dave doing here? I want proper racism. I want Bernard Manning. You want, you know, one right, two right. How many right you want? <laughs> two poco, two right. How many right you want? <laughs> I wanted to get so confused. You know, he doesn't even know what he's ordering. You want two right or 17 right? <laughs> 28 right or 29 right? <laughs> I wanted to be like Jackie Chan racing. Like, hmm, how many right you want? Oh, waiter, please, no violence, master. <laughs> I wanted to get so angry, he texted on the guy in the kitchen because you confused him during the order. You want two right or three right? One minute, one minute. Suck the fire, I try right! I don't know what I just ordered. There's someone getting Jackie Chan in that kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, it's borderline. Borderline unacceptable. Oh, wait. Okay, all right. So this is where he's saying, when I go to a, that's he said that's where I want racism. When I go to a restaurant, I want I want racism in a restaurant. Meaning, when he goes to a restaurant, he wants people to act like cultural stereotypes in order to get the full restaurant experience. So when he goes to a Chinese restaurant, he doesn't want Dave to serve him. You know, he's like, uh, you know, what can I get you, mate? He doesn't want that. He's like, well, you can get me a Chinese waiter for a start. You know, he wants to have the full-on authentic experience, even if it's a cultural stereotype. I don't know. It's hard to explain this. It's just really hard to explain. You, you, I don't know what you're thinking, but anyway. Right, and then he starts going on about how, yeah, he expects to have this super cliché Chinese waiter shouting orders into the kitchen. This is the sort of restaurant experience he'd like to have, even though this is sort of an unacceptable stereotype, really. You can get me a Chinese waiter. <laughs> What's Dave doing here? <laughs> I want proper racism. I want Bernard Manning. You want, you know, one right, two right. How many right you want? <laughs> All right, this is a really quite an over-the-top Chinese accent, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> two poco, two right. How many right you want? That? Now, this, he's saying that this is racist because this is what, in the UK... This is a stereotype or cliche of a Chinese waiter shouting orders in a in a loud voice that we can't understand into the kitchen. All right. Now that uh, I don't know if that, that's grounded in reality because of course all Chinese people don't speak like that. But he's he's playing with the stereotypes. He's playing around with the cliches and turning them into comedy. And um, and then he starts doing something which, if you can't see the video, obviously you can't see it. And he's doing this thing, which is where a lot of a lot of the time we've been exposed to Chinese stuff through going to Chinese restaurants and also from kung fu movies. And if you watch a kung fu movie growing up, um, like you know many of us did in the eighties and nineties and stuff, a lot of the kung fu movies that came from China were dubbed into English. And so you got the character speaking Chinese, one of the Chinese languages, and then the dubbing goes on over the top, but the dubbing was really terrible. So the mouth of the person's moving, and then the thing that the person says is really, it doesn't synchronize at all. So it could be like someone's mouth moving a lot, and then just one simple thing coming out, but the mouth keeps moving. So it'd be like mouth moving, mouth moving, uh, like... <laughs> Like this. I wanted to get so confused, he, like, he doesn't even know what he's ordering. You want two right or 17 right? Okay. He's still talking about the waiter. And then he does the, he starts to make fun of, of the dubbing in Chinese kung fu movies. 28 right or 29 right? 28, do you know what he's saying there? 28 rice or 29 rice, but it sounds like rye. 29 rye, meaning 29 rice. 28 right or 29 rye? I wanted to be like Jackie Chan racing, like, hmm, how many right you want? 
<laughs> okay, that's the one. Uh, so this is where he's he's doing quite a clever impression of like moving his mouth silently while also saying, hmm, how many rice you want? And his mouth keeps moving, which is, it, it's exactly like watching a Kung Fu movie. No, waiter, please, no violence, master. <laughs> <laughs> this mouth keeps moving like mm, 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 and he's going oh no no violence master which it's just exactly the same as when you're watching a kung fu movie i don't know if you i don't know if you're getting this are you getting this i've got no idea at all what you're thinking are you enjoying this i don't know oh let's carry on i want him to get so angry he texted on the guy in the kitchen because you confused him during the order I want him to get so angry that he takes it out on the guy in the kitchen. If you take something out on someone, it's like you're frustrated and you vent your frustration on someone else. You take it out on them. So I want the, the waiter to get so angry that he takes it out on the guy in the kitchen. So he, he wants to hear a really angry waiter shouting at the chef in the kitchen um, in that cliched way. I want to get so angry, he texted on the guy in the kitchen because you confused him during the order. You want two right or three right? One minute, one minute. So the fire right, right, right. <laughs> I don't know what I just ordered. <laughs> someone's getting Jackie Chan in that kitchen. I don't know what I just ordered, but, it's, uh, but someone's getting Jackie chan in that kitchen. So he actually uses Jackie Chan as a verb here. Someone is getting Jackie chan in that kitchen. Yeah, okay. There was one restaurant I heard about in London. Got closed down because they were putting flour in a bin and onion barges in a basket. <laughs> oh, God. So he's saying one, one restaurant that he heard about in London. I'll let you listen to this the, the next few minutes without interrupting. Uh, he heard, of about a, heard about a restaurant in London which got closed down. If a restaurant gets closed down, it's probably because it's not uh, complying with health and safety uh cleanliness food safe food standards you know uh so he's saying i heard about one restaurant in london probably an indian restaurant because he starts doing the accent which got closed down because they were putting onion they were putting flour in the bin flour is that white powder that they used to make bread uh, they were putting flour in the bin and onion barges in a basket that like onion barges in a basket and flour in the bin so basically using like just using the bin uh, to store things. So using very dirty spaces to store things. So basically he's talking about a restaurant that had extremely poor hygiene in the kitchen and it got closed down. And then he does the voice of the guy saying, yeah, you know, bin, basket, same thing. Um, And he repeats other things. This, this, same thing. No, 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 same thing. And, the, you know, see if you can see where the joke is going. What do you think will be the, the last line of that particular joke? But anyway, let's, let's hear. There was one restaurant I heard about in London. Got closed down because they were putting flour in a bin and onion barges in a basket. So when health and safety turned up, they said, is that the bin or the bucket? Ah, bin, bucket, same thing. <laughs> is that the kitchen or the bathroom? Kitchen, bathroom, same thing. <laughs> is that the fridge or the fridge? Fridge, fridge, the same thing. <laughs> Is that your wife or your cousin? Wife, cousin, the same thing. <laughs> um, uh, all right, what was it? Is that the bin or a bucket? Uh, bin, bucket, same thing. Is that, uh, what's the next one? <laughs> Is that the bin or the bucket? Uh, bin, bucket, same thing. <laughs> Just the accent is so on point. <laughs> is that the kitchen or the bar? Kitchen, bathroom, same thing. <laughs> Kitchen, bathroom, same thing. Is that the fridge or the freezer? Fridge, freezer, the same thing. <laughs> fridge, freezer, same thing. Is that your wife or your cousin? Wife, cousin, the same thing. <laughs> uh, wife, cousin, uh, same thing. Times have changed now, mate. Now, when I was growing up, I grew up in the 70s, but there was no money. You know you got no money when your family reused margarine tubs. That's when you know your skin. You can't believe it's not butter. That's because there's mincemeat in that shit. I got mincemeat on my toast in the morning. My family used to think water was a preservative. Like, say there was no uh, soap in the house. Dad, there's no soap in the house. He thought, put water into the soap, you get more soap out of it. <laughs> it's not technically correct, is it? Dad, there's no soap. Don't worry, put water in the soap. 
not shake the soap. You got more soap. It's war on my hands now. I got homeopathic soap. We used to have fish and chips once a week. There was no ketchup in there. So there's no ketchup. Don't worry. Put water in the ketchup. <laughs> Shake the ketchup. <laughs> you got a bottle of ketchup. <laughs> I've got red water on my chips now. <laughs> I've got soggy chips. I had so much water on my plate, the fish started swimming about again. Family thought if you put stuff in the freezer, it lasts forever. Fresh in the freezer. <laughs> we used to have stuff that was well past it. It's a freezer, not a time machine. <laughs> we used to have chicken, fish, dodo. Oh, okay. All right, let's go back to that. It's on my toast in the morning. Margarine tubs. So now he's talking about how when he was growing up as a, uh, when he was uh, growing up with his family, uh, they were skint. Skint, another slang word, uh, meaning uh, poor. Like they had no money. They were skint. All right? Times have changed now, mate. Now, when I was growing up, I grew up in the 70s where there was no money. You know you got no money when your family reuse margarine tubs. You know you got no money when your family reuse margarine tubs. Margarine is like a butter substitute. It's something that you might use for cooking or spreading on toast or something. It's like butter, but it's it's probably cheaper. It's made of vegetables, vegetable f- what? Vegetable extract. Um, it's it looks like butter basically. It's just cheaper. So you know you're skint. You know you got no money when you're you're reusing margarine tubs. You know butter or margarine comes in a a cheapo plastic tub. And when the stuff is finished, you probably just throw away the tub. But if you're poor, if you're skint, you're going to reuse that tub to keep other things in it. So you know you're poor when you're reusing margarine tubs. 70s, but there was no money. You know you got no money when your family reuse margarine tubs. <laughs> That's when you know you're skint. You can't believe it's not butter. You can't believe it's not butter. So there, there's his London accent coming out. Butter, butter. Um, but I can't believe it's not butter is actually the name of a uh, a brand of margarine. I'm not sure if it's margarine or it's like sort of fake butter. It's not butter, but it says, I can't believe it's not butter. It's like a butter substitute that's very similar to butter. But anyway, that's kind of, that's sort of part of the joke there. I can't believe it's not butter. And in fact, it's not butter. It's 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 because it's full of uh, mince meat because his mum has put mincemeat in the uh, margarine tub. Mincemeat is meat that's been minced. You would use mincemeat to make spaghetti bolognese, for example. That's mincemeat. So, can't believe it's not butter. It's because there's, there's mincemeat in that shit. That's when you know you're skint. You can't believe it's not butter. That's because there's mincemeat in that shit. I've got mincemeat on my toast in the morning. My family used to think water was a preservative. My family used to think water, so it's definitely his London accent. My family used to think water was um, a preservative. Now, the thing I was saying about Paul's accent before, like, because I've told you that Paul is of Indian origin, you might be thinking, does he have an Indian accent? He doesn't, right? He doesn't. He sounds like pretty much any other person from London with a London accent, right? I mean, Paul Taylor... Sounds a bit like this, doesn't he? You know, he drops his T's. He might say butter instead of butter. So uh, my family used to think water was a preservative. A preservative or preservative is something that you will preserve things. Like uh, vinegar, I think, is a preservative. Oil, is that a preservative? You can put certain types of food in uh, vinegar, uh, oil, whatever, and it will preserve the food. It will keep it fresh. So my family used to think that water was a preservative. (laughs) <laughs> my family used to think water was a preservative like say there was no uh, soap in the house dad there's no soap in the house he thought put water into the soap you get more soap out of it yeah if there's no soap you put water in the soap you actually get more soap out of it which is kind of true isn't it i mean when you when you've run out of soap you just put a bit of water in and it kind of seems to make more soap but apparently paul's dad did this 
with soap and also he did it with ketchup as well as we'll hear so put put water in it you get more soap out there was no uh, soap in the house dad there's no soap in the house he thought put water into the soap you get more soap out of it it's not technically correct is it dad there's no soap no buddy put water in the soap shake the soap you got more soap it's war on my hands now I've got homeopathic soap <laughs> We've got homeopathic soap. Homeopathy, you know, it's a form of alternative medicine that basically involves uh, diluting things many, many, many times in water. I've got homeopathic soap, which is basically, I've got water on my hands. <laughs> we used to have fish and chips once a week. There was no ketchup in there. So there's no ketchup. Don't worry. Put water in the ketchup. <laughs> Shake the ketchup. <laughs> you got a bottle of ketchup. <laughs> I've got red water on my chips now. I've got red water on my chips now. I think it's like the, there's so much water on the plate, the fish are starting to swim around again. I've got soggy chips. Soggy, there's a nice word, S-O-G-G-Y. A nice bit of English slang that I would use. It's the perfect word for if you, if you get water on your chips, your chips will be soggy. Okay, that's the word. That's the word you need for when you spill water on your chips, which I don't know if that ever happens to you, or if you spill tea on your toast your your toast will be soggy right okay soggy chips soggy toast all right the carpet would be soggy if you spill water or something on the carpet the carpet's going to be soggy so he's saying i've got soggy chips i've got red water on my chips now i've got soggy chips i had so much water on my plate the fish started swimming about again i had so much water on my plate the fish started swimming about again Mm, can you repeat that? I had so much water on my plate, the fish started to swim about again. Or the fish started swimming about again. You can start swimming, start to swim. Both. Family thought if you put stuff in the freezer, it lasts forever. Fresh in the freezer. <laughs> you used to have stuff that was well past it. It's a freezer, not a time machine. <laughs> yeah. We used to have chicken, fish, dodo. We used to have chicken, fish, dodo. You know what the dodo is? It's a, an extinct animal. It's a, a flightless bird that existed, I don't know when, like two, 100, 200 years ago. It's now extinct. So uh, he, they had so stuff that was in the freezer for so long, they included even species that don't even exist anymore. That's how long stuff was kept in their freezer. It's, not a, it's a freezer. It's not a time machine. <laughs> different that's why I break down barrier like i travel on virgin planes now right problem is when i travel abroad on virgin planes you can phone up your people tell them when you're arriving at your destination they've got phones on the planes problem is most of my family speak punjabi abroad so when i'm telling them i'm arriving i've got to tell them in punjabi i was on the plane i was like on my flight uh, 749 10 minutes to which land cut up yeah the guy next to me shit himself <laughs> He phoned up his wife and told him he loved her. (laughs) And he might never see her again. I didn't want to ruin the surprise. I started reading the Quran. I'm not even a Muslim. This country hasn't quite clamped down, even the government, you know? Problems in this country. You get stabbed in this country, they won't find the killers. But if you drive down a bus lane, They'll take a picture of you in the car and send it to your house within 48 hours. So if you get stabbed, make sure you get stabbed in a bus lane. All right, all right, let's back it up. I think this is maybe the last bit. This country hasn't... Okay, 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 okay. okay, okay, okay. The problem is when I travel... It's different. So he's talking about travelling by plane. He says, I travel by Virgin Airways... And they have telephones on board the plane. So when I'm like flying to India, I can call my family from the plane and tell them when I'm going to be arriving, right? And I did this recently on an airplane. Um, I, uh, I used the phone on, and I had to call my Indian family and, and they sp- don't speak English. They speak Punjabi. So I had to tell them I was arriving in Punjabi and the guy, <laughs> and so he does it. And the guy next to me shit himself. So if you shit yourself, it means you, you're very scared. Okay, and you know, obviously, this is because um, the joke really is that Paul, being a brown skinned gentleman, is sometimes um, mistaken for being 
let's say, a Muslim, right? And first of all, even if, let's say, if you were sitting on a plane next to... Uh, I mean, the, the joke is the person next to him was, was like, reactionary or was a, a scared was scared of brown people. And he, when he heard Paul Chowdhury speaking in a foreign language, he, sh- he shat himself. He got scared because he thought that he might be a terrorist. But the thing is that Paul Chowdhury's not even a Muslim. He's, he's a Sikh. I travel on Virgin Plains now, right? Problem is, when I travel abroad on Virgin Plains, you can phone up your people, tell them when you're arriving at your destination. They've got phones on the planes. Problem is, most of my family speak Punjabi abroad. So when I'm telling them I'm arriving, I've got to tell them in Punjabi. I was on the plane. I was like, on my flight uh, 749, 10 minutes to which land cut up here. The guy next to me shit himself. I tell you what, me explaining the, Paul Chowdhury's jokes, it really is a case of like, when you explain a joke, it's like dissecting a frog. You might learn something, but the frog dies in the process. I mean, explaining Paul, I've just realised, explaining Paul Chowdhury's jokes really, really sort of destroys the humour because it's it's more about just the all the things that are not said. It's about the the the, the unspoken tensions that we all have in England around ethnic issues and about things like terrorism and about all this stuff and about not wanting to be racist and about some people being racist without realising it or perhaps people having preconceptions that uh, have no basis in reality and or just simply Paul Chowdhury's personal experience of going through life and people doing things and saying things to him which show that they've no idea who he really is like people, for example, assuming that he is Muslim. In fact, I've seen lots of interview footage of Paul Chowdhury talking about times when he has been contacted by radio stations, contacted by newspapers, asking for interviews for him to comment on the on uh, Islamic related issues, like, for example, you know, commenting on terrorist attacks or commenting on other issues that relate to Islam as if he's a spokesman for Islam. And he kind of, he has to say to them, look, you know, I'm not even Muslim. I'm, you know, I'm a Sikh. I've got, I've, I've got no idea about these Islamic issues, um, which, you know, is something that he actually experiences in his life. So I don't know me explaining the jokes. I mean, uh, underneath the humor, there are actually kind of serious themes going on and so whenever i explain them it just immediately removes the humor out of it and you, we just end up with like oh okay this is kind of fairly serious but this is i guess what's clever about paul chowdhury as a comedian is that he manages to make the whole audience laugh because he puts his finger on what makes ev- what is making everyone feel a bit uncomfortable and he confidently and in a kind of serious in his normal voice he's quite serious but in his accents, he's ridiculous. He, he uses these tricks to just make everyone laugh, basically, about all of it. He phoned up his wife and told him he loved her. <laughs> and he might never see her again. I didn't want to ruin the surprise. I started reading the Quran. I started reading the Quran. I'm not even a Muslim. <laughs> this country hasn't quite clamped down, even the government. You know, problems in this country. You get stabbed in this country, they won't find the killers. But if you drive down a bus lane... Right, if you get stabbed in this country, like if someone uh, attacks you with a knife, if you get stabbed in this country, uh, they won't find the killers. But if you drive down a bus lane... So, I mean, it, I, it must be the same where you are. You have bus lanes, right? In London, though, you have uh, lanes on the road that are dedicated only to buses, and they're usually painted red. And you're not allowed to drive on the bus lane, and it's a, it's an offence. It's a, a kind of a traffic offence to drive uh, in a bus lane. And if you do, you can be, you know, charged for it. You'll be given a fine. You have to pay money because you've, you've done something illegal on the road. You drove down a bus lane, and they've got a special technology that will help them identify when someone has driven down a bus lane. They have cameras, uh, you know, uh, speed cameras, and also you know, traffic cameras that will take a picture of the car. When you drive down the bus lane, they'll automatically take a photograph of the car. They'll take the picture of your number plate and they'll take a picture of your face in the car and they will then uh, process it and email it to your house within a day or something, uh, processing the fine immediately. 
but uh, they can't catch someone if you get stabbed. So if you get stabbed, just make sure you get stabbed in a bus lane. They'll take a picture of you in the car and send it to your house within 48 hours. So if you get stabbed, make sure you get stabbed in a bus lane. It's a problem, you know. Even though, like people don't even wear their seatbelts to the car. Government had this campaign going to try and help people wear a seatbelt. This guy goes to pick up a pizza. He's not wearing a seatbelt. He crashes a car. Pizza's flipped up all over the place. <laughs> Pepper army everywhere. He's dead. Second take. He picks up a pizza again. Crashes a car. This time he's wearing a seatbelt. Pizza's flipped up all over the place. Pepper army everywhere. But he survives. He says, "What have you learned from this video?" I'm like, get your pizza delivered. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Because people believe in all that now. Illuminati. People think this, the government controlled by other forces. Illuminati, isn't it, blood? (laughs) You believe in that, man? You believe in, like, 9-11 conspiracies? I got mates like you. My mate goes, King Kong did that, isn't it? (laughs) (laughs) Where was King Kong during 9-11, blood? He goes, blood, yeah, don't fool me my mobile, innit? Call me my landline. <laughs> How come? CIA, innit? <laughs> you live in England, you idiot. <laughs> you don't know, innit? CIA, MFI, MNS. <laughs> a CF, a C, so he's talking about like an Indian friend of his who's like paranoid about the Illuminati, bruv. Uh, conspiracy theories. He's, don't call me on my mobile, call me on my landline. Um, you know, why? Well, because CIA, blood. CIA, he's, he's paranoid that the CIA are listening in on his telephone calls on his mobile phone. It's like, mate, you live in England, you idiot. Um, and uh, it's like, no, man, CIA, CIA, MFI, MNS. MFI is a place where you'd buy furniture in England, MFI. And MNS is Marks and Spencer. That's a place where you'd buy clothes and food. So anyway, it's just this kind of silly joke there at the end. We need to finish. We need to finish this episode, Luke. <laughs> He goes, Illuminati, blood, yeah? He goes, he goes yeah, blood, yeah. Blood, that's like a, a, a slang term that you hear people in London saying, and it's like, um, uh, it's like mate. It's a bit like saying mate. All right, mate, all right, blood. Um, Illuminati, blood, meaning it's the Illuminati, my friend. Um, the Illuminati, that's like, you know, what uh, many conspiracy theorists talk about the Illuminati as if they are this secret organization that is controlling everything in the world. In fact, since I've just said Illuminati several times on this podcast, I imagine they are now all listening to this. So the alien reptilian Illuminati people, welcome to Luke's English Podcast. Bin Laden, yeah? He's not even dead, isn't he? What are you talking about? Because if he died, he would have got a Muslim burial. No, he wouldn't. Bin Laden didn't deserve to get thrown into the sea. We should have just chucked him into a wheelie bin. <laughs> like we did with that cat last year. <laughs> and then we could have called him Osama Wheelie Bin Laden. <laughs> All right. It's, it's a pretty lame joke. Uh, a bin, you know, a bin is, a, is something you throw rubbish into. Yeah. So if you, if you finish your orange juice, you throw the carton in the bin. Right. Uh, a wheelie bin is a large bin that you have outside your house and it's got wheels on it so that the rubbish disposal people can wheel the bin away and, you know, remove the rubbish and stuff, a wheelie bin. So he's saying, he's talking about, you know, uh, Bin Laden ain't even dead. So this is his friend who believes in conspiracy theories. And then he he says, uh, what is it? Um, Bin Laden didn't even deserve a proper burial. They should have just thrown him in a bin. They should have thrown him in a wheelie bin and then they could have called him Osama Wheelie Bin Laden. Ha 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 ha. Kind of a lame joke, but I quite like it. There's blood, it's the Illuminati, yeah? Illum- I mean, what's the Illuminati anyway? People that glow in the dark, innit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good one. The Illuminati. What is the Illuminati? It's people that glow in the dark, innit? It's because they're called the Illuminati. Like to illuminate, it means to, 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 to glow up or to light up. So what what are the Illuminati? It's people that glow in the dark, isn't it? Right. So his mate is very stupid and he thinks that the Illuminati is people who glow in the dark. I think it's quite a funny joke. That is, is that the end of his routine? That's my time. You've been a great job. 
That's my time. You've been a great crowd, he says, as he leaves the stage. So that was Paul Chowdhury, ladies and gents. How did you get on with that? This has been a long episode. I need to draw the episode to a close, I think, before this gets far too long. I've no idea what you've been thinking uh, during this. Uh, Paul Chowdhury, though, is, um, you know, a, a famous comedian. He's, he's big enough to appear on a show like that. He's a very popular comic. Uh, and I don't know, what's the conclusion here? The conclusion is that we have a, a fairly diverse uh, culture in, in which there are certain levels of tension around ethnicity and stuff. But it's nice to have a comedian like Paul Chowdhury who can do the accents, make fun of everyone, and sort of we can use this as a cathartic way to laugh about these um, issues that we have in society. Uh, I think that's a good thing. And it's, you know, I love comedy for this reason that we can have something like stand up comedy can just give everyone a chance to just, just laugh about ourselves and laugh about the, the stupid things that we have in our culture and all that sort of thing. All right. Stop talking, Luke. You just stop it now. That's enough. Okay, then. Thank you for listening. Leave your comments on the page for this episode. I'd like to know what you think. Um, this has been fairly difficult for me to to do, uh, to try and explain all this stuff for you. So I hope that it's helped <laughs> in some way. Uh, and I hope you found some of that stuff funny. But who knows? Anyway, this is not the best way to present comedy to people. It's like, oh, here's some stuff. I don't know what you're going to think. I mean, imagine that if someone was hosting a comedy show and the MC of the comedy show, welcome to the comedy show. So we've got some uh, comedians for you this evening. Um, to be honest, I've no idea what you're going to think. I mean, you might find them completely uh, unfunny. The chances are that you won't understand any of it and you, you won't understand it at all. But anyway, here comes the first comedian and then they come up and they do their thing. And at the end of the show, well, folks, that was the show. I've no idea what you thought of it, but uh, I hope you weren't disappointed. OK, well, anyway, thanks a lot. Come back next week. Bye. You know, that's no way to run a comedy show. But anyway, this isn't a comedy show. This is a podcast, isn't it, for, for learners of English. So anyway, I hope you've picked up a few bits of English in there. And the video for that is on the page for this episode. So you can actually see Paul Chowdhury doing his comedy. It makes a difference because he's a, you know, he's got funny person. He, he does some funny faces and some other funny things during the routine. Uh, but that's it for now. I'll speak to you again on the podcast soon. Uh, until then, goodbye. Bye. 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 Thanks for listening to Luke's English Podcast. For more information, visit teacherluke.co.uk.